Good afternoon. I'm going to be talking with you today about a travel journal that is a faux Midori. But first I wanted to cover some um, information about the way that you punch holes and set the uh, eyelets or grommets uh, into the fabric. There are multiple different tools to do the same job and each has its pros and cons. Uh, I have arranged my tools here uh, from the least expensive to the most expensive and I'm going to tell you a little bit about those. When you're doing an eyelet, there's two parts. One is that you want to punch a hole, and I don't know if you can see that little tiny shank, but you want to set, put a hole where that shank goes through. You want this pretty part to the outside where it's visible, and then where it's going to be split on the shank, that is on the inside. Uh, but you have to punch the hole, and then you have to have a tool that splits that shank uh, to set the eyelet. So the least expensive tool, uh, easiest to learn to use, is this little set of punches and eyelet setters. The punches have these little um, heads on them of different sizes, and they screw in, and you put it on top of the uh, material, tap your hammer, and it punches a nice clean hole. Then after you've put your eyelet in, you take an eyelet setter and you would put the eyelet there, you'd put your fabric over it with the right side, the outside down. Uh, then these little setters all have a little nipple on them. The nipple goes into the shank portion and when you tap here, that splits the shank and sets the eyelet. This is the least expensive. You can punch your holes anywhere. You can set your eyelet anywhere in your fabric. And I will show you in a minute that some of these other tools, while they're more expensive and fancier, don't necessarily allow you to do everything you want to do. So the next tool that a lot of people have, if they came from the scrapbooking world, is this thing called a Memory Keeper's Cropodile. It has <coughs> punches. Here is the 1 8th and the 3 16th, but you can see can't go very deep into your material. And then it has the setter here with the little shank that goes in just the same way. You squeeze and it sets the eyelet. But like I said, if you're doing a foam Midori and you need to put a hole here in the middle, there's no way that that's going to punch a hole that deep. Well, that was also a problem in the scrapbooking world, so they came up with this version, which had the long uh, neck in it, and it allowed you to punch a hole all the way into the middle of a 12 by 12 piece of paper. It has the setter that works the same squeezing mechanism. It has the 1 8th, if I can get it on the right setting, it has the 1 8th punch and the 3 16th punch, so you have the ability to do uh, what you need to do with this. A lot of people like it because when it's set up, uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of strength to punch down, but and you also can use your weight. So if you don't have really strong hands, this is a better tool. The last tool I'm going to cover here is something I own because I do regular uh, other type, well, regular but other types of book binding. And uh, if you're punching through leather or whatever, it's very nice to have one of these Japanese screw punches, but they are quite expensive. When, it, it, uh, when you put it into the material, it actually screws when you push and uh, very easily punches you in very nice, very small holes for sewing. Doesn't set eyelets though, so if you have this, you still need an eyelet setter. So onto the little book. Uh, Foam Midori. Uh, the basic one, and Midori, this is a faux, fake Midori. Midori is a Japanese company that has made wonderful, uh, elegant uh, travel journals uh, for decades, and this is just a version that crafters have come up with to replace it. Uh, it has an elastic band for holding one to three signatures, and I'll show you how it does that, and then 
the uh, elastic is also threaded through a central hole that becomes the closure. In my little travel book today, I have three unsewn signatures. Generally, when you're making a Fomodori, you sew your signatures together. And then when you're through uh, with your signature, you take it out and store it somewhere. And that's okay. Uh, you have to create some sort of a storage device. But what I was going to do with mine, which is where the little bit of difference comes in, is that when I've been on uh, trips before and created a journal that I've sewn, I've always been frustrated. I either had too many or too few pages to write on. So what I've done here is uh, using Tim Holtz and D DCWV, uh, I think it's called the Timeless Con uh, Collection, I've created signatures that I have yet to sew, went ahead and put some pockets, but a lot of the ephemera that's going to go on here, I'm hoping to gather on my trip, and I will add that as, it, as I go by. So I have my two signatures for my book here. I have put them together with a uh, piece of elastic that you can see uh, stretched here, just through the middle. And if I put that under that elastic band, that traps these two. And then to get over my frustration, I created a little signature of just writing papers. And I can slip that under here. And then I can add these if needed. If I don't, I'm on my way to another journal later on. I went ahead and created a cover for the finished product when I get home from my trip. This is made out of a, it's kind of hard to see, but it's a green file folder, just a regular file folder. I used some Tim Holtz paper on the outside, decoupaged it. I was going to reinforce the spine with this Craftex material, but then I decided, you know, that Craftex color is a pretty nice color for a lining paper. So I just decided to line the whole thing with the Craftex. It makes a pliable cover, uh, you know, that is fairly soft, but it's also sturdy. Uh, and because this Craftex uh, doesn't rip or fray. It, it's a really, really nice cover. One other thing I wanted to tell you about, and I failed to do it while I had this apart, is when I made my Midori cover, I, the rough leather on the inside of this uh, cover was not in the best of shape. I picked my leather up from the local craft store that sells it by the pound. Uh, they get the leather from an upholsterer. and. So I wanted to kind of cover that up, and the way that I do that, and I've mentioned it somewhere on uh, the Facebook page, but I don't know that a lot of people saw it, is I use this material called Pellon, or some people call it Wonder Under. Uh, it is a fusible web. It comes on a sheet of paper that's kind of waxy. You put the web to the wrong side of your fabric and iron it on. Then you remove the backing and you turn your uh, fabric over and iron on the right side, attaching it to your leather or another piece of fabric, whatever. Uh, it's basically a hot glue. The heat melts the, the glue, and but it gives you a nice flat surface that is really pretty and you don't have any lumps or bumps that you would have if you tried to use Fabri-Tac or anything like that. The other thing I wanted to share with you is my travel kit. When I go on a kit, I take a nice writing pen, but I also take some scissors uh, and a glue stick and a little washi tape, and that's to help me adhere parts of my ephemera that I collect into the book at least temporarily. I may come home and, and glue them with some Aileen's or whatever, but that helps me to keep my uh, notebook looking uh, nice and not falling apart during the trip. So I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about a faux Midori and how to set eyelets, and I'll see you again soon.